Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to look at some important facts about calories and how exactly do scientists put the specific number of calories on our nutrition labels on the food we eat every day, and what do those mean? This is going to lead us in today's lecture, 7.2, calorimetry. For today, our learning target is we want to be able to use calorimetry data and understand, utilize our knowledge of temperature change and specific heats to calculate the amount of heat transfer for any given reaction. So, our focus question for today is, how do we determine the amount of calories in a bag of flaming Hot Cheetos? First, let's understand how do, we, how do we measure the energy in food. And the first concept we need to know to understand how we measure food energy is specific heat. Specific heat, most basically, is just a reflection of the fact that the amount of energy it takes, the amount of energy that we can transfer from one substance to another one, depends entirely on the nature of that substance itself. So in this case, specific heat refers to how much energy does it take to heat up one gram of whatever substance we're dealing with, one degree Celsius. And we, we understand things like this because when we deal with specific heat, metal has a much lower specific heat than, say, wood. So when we have a pot of water and we put it on the stove and we stir it with a wooden spoon, the iron pot is going to get hotter much more easily than the wooden spoon because it takes a lot more energy to heat up the wood than it does the metal. This is due to the different natures of each of the substances and their difference in specific heat. Now, different substances have all different kinds of specific heat. In fact, if you look at some of the metals, lead, platinum, tungsten, mercury, silver, zinc, brass, copper, iron, steel, aluminum, they have less than 1,000, values of less than 1,000. But just water in and of itself has a value of about 4,186 joules per kilogram Kelvin, which is pretty crazy. It's a, pretty, it's a much higher value you might expect. Now, we actually measure this in terms of uh, energy that we describe as Q, the amount of heat gained or released. And Q is equal to mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. And we call the change in temperature delta T, this guy right here. Delta T is the change of temperature. The change of temperature is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And this is how we use calorimetry to measure the heat of a given chemical reaction. Now, what does a problem like that look like? Let's check it out. Say we have a 4-gram sample of glass heated from 274 Kelvin to 314 Kelvin. Glass has a specific heat of 0 0.20 joules per gram Kelvin. How much heat is gained during this heating? Well, the first thing we need to look at is let's look back at the equation. How am I going to remember this equation? Q equals mc delta t. When I write that out, that kind of looks like, let's see it here, Q equals mc delta t, or mcat. That's my cat sound for you. Now the first thing I'm going to do is write out Q equals mcat, and then I'm going to assign a value to each of my variables. I have Q, I have M, I have specific heat, C, and I have delta T. And in this case, Q equals, it's the heat, so we don't know it. So we'll be looking for Q. Mass is equal to 4.0 grams. 4.0 Gs, we can put it right there. It says glass has a specific heat of, so we know that this number, this value, is going to be a specific heat. And that is 0 0.2 joules per gram Kelvin. And it, the reason why it's joules per gram Kelvin, it's telling us what units to use when we cancel out these units here. And then the delta T, finally, which is the change in temperature. And this is equal to the final temperature, 314 Kelvin, minus the initial temperature which is 274 Kelvin. So when I do that math, I'm going to get 40 Kelvin total. And all I have to do is plug those numbers in to their assigned variables. So in this case, Q equals 4, which is grams, times C, which is 0 0.2, joules per gram Kelvin, so we know grams would cancel out, times 40 Kelvin, the change in temperature, delta T. 
Remember, the delta means change. So how much does it change? It changes exactly 40. So when we multiply these together, I know that 4 times 2 is 8. And there's one decimal place, so it's going to be 0 0.8, 0 0.8 times 40. I know that 8 times 4 is 32. And we have one zero. But then we also have one decimal. Some of the decimal over one place, and I'm going to get 32. Kelvin cancels out, so I'm going to end up with joules. 32 joules of heat or energy is gained during this heating. And that's how you solve any specific heat problem. This is for all calorimetry. Now I want you guys to give this one a shot right here, where you're being asked to find the heat, the, the heat needed to change the temperature of a 30 gram sample of copper from 20 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. And the specific heat of copper is 0.4 joules per degree Celsius. If you really want to ramp it up a little bit, now I want you to try and find C. Determine the specific heat in this case if you're given Q in joules. Summarize that and that's all for that one. Just a little bit of food facts for you. Look over some of the sugar contents of your drinks and you might realize that water is often your best choice. That's why I always carry around two liters of water with me at any time. Delicious. Ah. Now that I feel refreshed, I'll give you guys an opportunity to check out some of the calories in Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Sometimes we measure Q in calories. And when we do that, we use water as our medium. So food scientists measure the calories contained within food by measuring the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. And water specific heat is 4.184 joules per gram Kelvin. In this case, when we, when we find those calories, that Q, those are in small calories, which when you add up a thousand of those small calories equal one big calorie, which you will find on the back of a bag of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. And Flamin' Hot Cheetos has 140 big calories. This is a dangerous beast. So we're about to do a Flamin' Hot Cheetos lab in this class. So prepare yourself by checking out some of the pre-lab, read over it, take the pre-lab assessment and grade yourselves before you put a sticker on the wall for your corresponding score. Take this exit slip to see how you feel about it and uh, grade yourselves on your learning logs. That's it for me today, guys. I hope this helped.